Welcome back to Ribbon Candy Hooking. I'm Deanna. Today we have a sewing project. Now, if you got the Jane Austen Advent Calendar, you noticed that there were some nice pieces of flannel in there, right? Flannel. Now, there were two days in a row of strips of flannel from, I bought these at the Vermont Flannel Company in Woodstock, Vermont. They often have bags of um, scraps and long pieces like this. If you're interested in this project and you didn't get the Jane Austen Advent Calendar because it's been sold out for quite a while, you could also get in touch with the Vermont Flannel Company. They are always willing to talk to people about thrifty ideas for their leftover strips. So I have a bunch of strips. I put a bunch of strips into your Advent Calendars. And what I'm doing now is I'm going to make a paper chain with these strips. So this is going to be extremely simple, a very simple sewing project. I'm doing it on my machine for speed. I'm, my machine is like a third arm for me. If you're not comfortable with the machine, then just go for your needle and thread. It works the same way, right? This is just a decorative, very easy garland. I've got my ruler out and I'm gonna do to about 12 inches, right? And I eyeball it, right? I'm not gonna do two colors the same in a row. These are two different ones. Let's go for those. Well, let's go for a dark and a light. I'm just gonna cut a bunch that are 12 inches and I'll be able to pick as I go what colors I want next. Now something like this garland you could use, I'm going to put it on the fireplace in the other room where I do most of my live shows. Um, I also like to put garlands like this, let's do a dark one too, on top of paintings, you know, hanging off the corners of paintings. Right through the holiday season this kind of decoration is so pretty. It's not necessarily Christmassy, right? It really could be for more than the holiday season. Now, you'll notice with these flannel strips that just like wool, right, this is 100% cotton, just like wool, the material wants to come off like this. So if they have little bits of shredding on the edge and, and you are persnickety, like I am persnickety, then you might want to just pull off the little bits and pieces on the edge so that they are really smooth and perfect. So... I'm going to do that just to this one, and then I'm going to sew it. You don't have to do this part. This is something that I do because I know it'll drive me crazy. It also adds a very small fringe on the sides. I'm going to show you that fringe. It's quite pretty. You can see the pattern better uh, with the little fringe showing, but that part is up to you. You see the little fringe? Isn't that pretty? So that adds a little je ne sais quoi. I'm going to make a little bit more fringe on this side. You could go as far as you want um, with making fringe, right? You don't have to go uh, berserk, but you can if you want. I'm going to go a little bit berserk. I'm just going to finish defringing this one. And be careful that you don't destroy it. It's very um, hardy, durable fabric, right? It's, it's flannel. So I'm just going to pull a couple more down. Hang on. It's got to be perfect. Every ring has got to be perfect. It is quite, you know, this is something you could do sitting in front of the TV too. It is quite a fast project and very simple. I'm going to take all my little bits and pieces off and put them on the floor. Just kidding. It's what I do here at the studio, but you might not want to do that either. So I've got a pretty fringe going here, right? And you make it as fringy as you want. And I'm literally just going to connect into a ring. This is how easy this is. Let me show you. I've got my machine right here. Now, I know that there's no fringe hanging off of the, well, there was a little one. I'm just going to make whatever kind of, do I want to put this over this? Do I, this kind of conversation in my head, you decide what looks better, you know, which end looks better out. If you don't like the end showing, then do like this and stitch it down like this, right? For me, at least with this one, this is a nice fringy edge on, edge on it too. I'm happy with this. I'm going to hold the body of it over to the side and I'm just going to sew this little area. Now make sure that you have a color thread that is a bit of a chameleon, right? I've got, um, well, like this dusty blue on here that I feel kind of goes with all of these colors. Maybe a red, a black, something like that that's going to kind of dark green, right? A color that might go with all of these colors. I wouldn't choose for this set of colors. Personally, I wouldn't choose like orange or sunflower yellow. You know what I mean? It might take away from the look of it being like a wintry garland. So I've just got it in there in my machine and I just rock through. I'm gonna backstitch a little bit. And just like this, I backstitch on the edges. I'll just run backwards, that's it. And get him out of there and be careful here because I am sewing him while he is already linked to himself. Now hang on, we're not done yet. 
we're going to do a few of these together and then I'm going to do the rest. So it's connected like that, right? And this is the first part of the chain. Let's do the next one. Let's prep the next one. I'm going to do one of these pretty colors. Let's do this pretty color. So same thing again. I'm just going to clean it up a little bit like this and maybe I'll speed up this part for you. Okay, nice and unfringed, nice and just the, just the right amount of fringe for me. I'm going to tuck it together again, but this time, here he is. I'm going to attach him to my regular piece, the loop that I just did, right? I'm going to attach him there first and link him like this. So in other words, I'm sewing it as I go, right? We've got a bit of a, an odd fellows motif happening here, right, Jay? Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to put him back under here. Now, be careful. Try to keep him straight. If you like pins... I'm not a big fan of pin, pins, I have to say, but I'm going to do best practices in a video. I'm going to show you this with a pen. I typically wouldn't use pins for a project like this because it's just, it's not worth it. It's more likely that the, I'm going to take them out actually. It's more likely that it's going to get stuck in the presser foot. And just keep your other guy out of the way that you already did and then go for it. And remember to back stitch a little bit if you're on the machine, just so you really tack it. When you pull it out, you are going great guns, making a very fast, very well-made, very pretty garland that I really think you can use for much of the winter, not just Christmas time. So I've got two links going, fast as that. I'm going to make a few more off camera, and I'll show you what I come up with, but it really is as simple as that. And you can, I'm sure, see perfectly how this would work as a hand sewing project if you are not a fan of a sewing machine or you just don't want to take the sewing machine out, you could do this so quickly by hand too. I'm going to go off camera for a little while and work on some of this stuff and then I'll show you what I came up with. So I've got my links going and I'm looking at them and I love them, but it's going to take a lot of material, right? So if you have the Jane Austen advent calendar, you should have enough to do. This is about half of what you can do. I think you've got eight links. So if you want more links, you should look for some more flannel. Cut up an old shir shirt or find a bolt of flannel. Like I found this bolt of flannel a while back, and I really love it. And all I'm going to do, flannel works the same way as wool. I'm just going to figure out what the right size is so I have the same size going. And I can just take some more flannel like this. It is easy to find, right? Flannel, you can rip it same as wool. Flannel is at all of the craft stores, no problem. Just make your pieces the same size as the ones you're working with, and you can add in any other prints of flannel you want. There are tons of flannels that are like reindeer and evergreen trees and snowflakes and things like that. All kinds of prints available if you don't want just the plaid. So something to think about. So I've done quite a few links. This is a very fast project, as you can imagine. Um, the only tip I want to give you is make sure that if you add flannel that you add a similar weight of flannel. If you add something that is substantially uh, thinner or thicker, uh, it could look different in the ring and it could fray different and all that stuff. So just be careful about that. The flannel that's in the advent calendars that this Vermont, uh, country, no, Vermont flannel company um, is very heavy. So just be thinking about that. Even if you're making a garland that is not flannel, it's maybe another fabric, maybe some of your quilt fabrics or whatever, just be thinking about like weights, similar weights, because um, otherwise it, it might look lumpy and bumpy and a little bit funny, you know. But otherwise, this is an incredibly fast project. I would venture to say once you have kind of gotten your crazy threads off, the little fraying threads and stuff like that off, and you've got your pieces ready to go, I would venture to say this isn't much more time consuming than, for example, doing doing the same thing, the paper chains with pieces of paper and staples. It's very fast once you get the hang of it to get in there with the sewing machine and remember to just lock up a little bit so they don't come undone. But it's very easy to just get in there and you get used to kind of pushing it aside, pushing so you don't sew over the back of it, you know, while you're doing the front of it. But I mean, I've got, it's been a very short time and I've got quite a few uh, links going. And, you know, I'm also thinking it could be very nice to kind of put over like a window, like a, a valance, because it's also fabric. Really, so many things that you can do with this. And like most of my ideas, I got the idea from shopping around 
for holiday stuff at a holiday fair this past a few weeks ago, not even a month ago, and um, I saw a lot of these paper chains, and somebody was doing them in like a wool, and I thought, ooh, that's very nice, but I don't know if I can part with my wool, um, and I thought, oh, wait a minute, we've got that flannel, right? and that's when I put everything into the advent calendars and thought, let's give this a shot, and I'll tell you, I didn't do it until now. I was, I was assuming that it was going to work well. It works really well. It works great. But then again, if you have the flannel and you don't want to do a garland, uh, you can just cut it up and use it to hook with it. You know, same, same as you would hooking with any other material. It really works the same way. It's very hardy and pretty, and it's going to make a beautiful pattern uh, as you hook it. So one or the other, no matter what you choose, I'm going to do a few more links, and I'll make the thumbnail the thing in front of the fireplace. But no matter what you choose, it's going to come out beautiful, right? It's a nice holiday-themed thing. I will see you next time at Ribbon Candy Hooking.